You're listening to The Recovered Life Show, the show that helps people in recovery live their best recovered lives. And here is your host, Damon Frank. And welcome back to The Recovered Life Show. I am pleased to be joined today again by Dr. G. Dr. Howard Gloss, clinical psychologist. How are you doing today, Dr. G? I'm doing great today, Damon. I'm really excited about the topic we're about to talk about. I am too, because we are moving fast and furious into the holidays. We've already had Halloween, and now everybody's gearing up for that big family party. And also- the Parties over the holidays, several parties. Yes, several parties. So- what I want to talk with you today about, uh, Dr. G, is how not to get triggered by your family over the holidays. Don't go because to the parties. I'm just joking. Right? Yeah, don't go. Don't show up. That's that's probably the easiest way, right? Right. But actually, you, you want to be part of your family. You want to feel connected. So um, we have to, we're going to give some strategies as to how to stay connected and still be part of the family festivities. I like that when you're saying staying connected, we know that recovery is about being connected and there might be a lot of people that are listening to this episode, Dr. G, and they might be going through their first holiday sober. They're all good with the connection inside the room, maybe with their therapist, but they're not so comfortable with it when they're thrown multiple days into a family event. Well, here's the thing everyone's got to remember when you're, especially when you're new in recovery, People are still going to remember you as you were, let's say, when you were using or when you were drinking. They may have not been part of the progress, especially if you live in a different town. So then what's going to happen is you're going to show up and they're going to have a memory of you as you were. But you're going to be thinking in your head, well, I've changed. I've done a lot of work on myself. So you're going to have to catch them up. So you've got to be prepared that their experience of who you are is going to probably be based on the last time they saw you. So what I would say is take the therapeutic role when you're talking to family. You probably experienced in meetings or with your therapist where it's more about being inquisitive. It's more about getting people up to speed versus just having this expectation that blindly people are going to get you and understand you. They're also going to be nervous around you because... Trust has to be rebuilt, and trust takes a long time. And a lot of times, trust gets rebuilt by small actions that we take. So, you know, give give space for that, allow it to happen. Just don't have the expectation that they're going to get you as this recovered person and understand who you are right in that moment. You know, Dr. G, I think a lot of people, they, they look at this as an opportunity to try to make things right for their family. Maybe they were that person, right? Maybe they were the person who ruined every holiday because of their drinking or, you know, always brought in the family drama. But I always say it's like making amends and doing that stuff. Holidays are the worst time for that. (laughs) I mean, you know, you have to pick the right time and, you know, sitting down in a Thanksgiving or Christmas or new year celebration and saying, you know what, aunt Matilda, let me tell you all of the horrible things, right? Like that just yeah, isn't probably the right time. A list of all the horrible things that she's yes. done too. So there's a competition. So I agree with you. Timing is everything. And that's probably not a good time to, to do that. Unless somebody invites you or, you know, creates the space for you to do that. Perhaps in the privacy of uh, a, a certain conversation. That's a little bit different. But to be sitting there at a holiday table and and just start, you know, opening up tremendously and then expecting people to, you know, be empathetic towards you. The thing is everybody else is coming with their baggage too. So you're not there you're not the only one who doesn't want to be triggered. Other people don't want to be triggered also. I I love what you're talking about. Can you dive into the expectations area because I think this is where I know that I have gone wrong, right? In in sometimes in a holiday event, I have an expectation that it's going to go a certain way or I'm going to be treated a certain way or people are going to appreciate what I got them or, you know what I mean? And it never really works out like that. They're so excited about your sobriety. Um, Yes. But they may be coming in with a whole other set of issues. Like perhaps they have felt, um, you know, uh, they've been hurt 
by when you were using. So they've got to rebuild the trust. They may also have their own issues, like I said, that they bring to the table. So I think one of the best skills to develop is try to be in reality, try to be in the moment, be mindful of what's going on in your surroundings, and be open to what is going on versus coming in with a big agenda. It's like when you do a therapy session, a lot of times you you sit down, we always ask a client, so how are you? Which is an interesting question, because when you think about it, patients always say, yeah. well, why are you asking me that? I'm in therapy. Of course, <laughs> I have issues. But really what I'm doing is I'm checking in with that person to see where they're at and where I could meet them in a conversation. So I think that's very important to do, try to meet the people as to where they're at. And remember, they're going to have certain memories and, and thoughts about you based on past experiences. And a lot of people in recovery want people to just get them right away. And they don't because they haven't been involved yeah. in the process of you working through some of your issues. So, again, their memory of you may be the last time they saw you. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know from my own experience, I got sober in my 20s. So there were, I still had grandparents that were alive and uncles and things like that. Right. And I know that, you know, a lot of times if you come from a family that has alcoholism or alcohol use disorder or even codependency, right. They're very protective. They like you being an alcoholic and coming to the family event and announcing, Hey, I'm sober. I'm an alcoholic in recovery triggers them. It doesn't necessarily trigger you because it, what does it mean to them if their grandson or son or daughter is, you know, has an alcohol issue, does it mean that they have it? So I think it brings up a lot of, it, it also triggers other people. Yeah, a hundred percent because, you know, that's the old, um, this happens so many times. I hear it from patients and clients. Well, I announced that I was alcoholic. And the first thing that happened is, as you said, my grandmother said, well, why don't you have a glass of wine? <laughs> Because it yeah. makes people uncomfortable because it triggers their own stuff. So be prepared for that, you know, that they may not be empathetic as much as you would like them to be. They may be more anxious about who you are because it forces them to think about themselves. And the last thing someone may want to do over the holidays is think about their alcoholism. So also another thing that's important, Damon, since we're talking about triggers, is be honest with yourself as to where you are in your recovery. For a lot of people, you know, being around, let's say, a lot of alcohol can be very difficult. So you have to be able to monitor that. And maybe, even though we joked about it at the beginning of the podcast, maybe there's an event that you decide not to go to because you might be triggered. And you could explain that to other people. Or, you know, just be prepared that there might be a lot of alcohol around. So if you have a good friend or a spouse or a lover, that they can support you in your journey to stay sober yeah. during that event. And, and you know, a little thing I've done with clients that helps a lot, I always tell them, have something in your hand that's non-alcoholic. Because yes. a lot of times it's just the act of holding on to something, almost like a little blanket when you're a kid, but actually feeling like you're holding something and you're not so separate from what's going on, that can help a great deal too. Yeah. I love, I love that you're saying that about knowing your own, where you're at right in your recovery process, because I know as a coach, a lot of times I've seen this Dr. G that people are working in therapy, like with clinical psychologists like you and really going deep. They're doing their 12 step thing. They've got a coach and they're doing it. And they say, you know what? I can do that, but they really can't. They're not really there yet. You know, they can't take that pressure, even though it might seem on the outside to everybody else. What's the big deal? You're going to a dinner, you're opening gifts. It's a, it's just too much for them. And they're unable to be honest with themselves. Right. So I think that is such a great, valuable thing when you're dealing with the holidays is to understand what your boundaries are going into these events. And also, you know, you sometimes you just might need a time out to leave the environment, you know, go for a walk, go into a different room and and, you know, recenter yourself 
and do some positive self-talk. And then you might be able to go back into the room. But, um, you know, that's what I mean about being honest and transparent with yourself as to where you're at. And to add to that, you know what's really great? Make it a personal journey. Instead of looking at the family as something that you are terrified of, try to understand how the experience of being with family can actually help you to grow. And you could bring back some of those insights into your work in, in with coaches, with therapists. So it can be a very positive growth experience. It may not feel that way in the moment, but eventually yeah. it can be. And it's really about what we're talking about, Damon, is being able to tolerate your anxiety during the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> and if it becomes so much, important. Right. <laughs> this is so great. You know what, Dr. G, I've got to ask you because sure. I know that everybody who's listening to this has been to an event in their life during the holidays. It did not go as they had expected. It never goes. And maybe it it right. never goes, but maybe it didn't go, it didn't go great, right? So if you see things starting to go, and I'd, I'd love your perspective on this because sure. everybody has an opinion, right, about it. But if you start seeing things going poorly, how do you hit that reset button and kind of start over anew, right? Instead of going down that path, that's really not going to be helpful for anyone. One of the things I do, you know, because we all have issues with our family, with my family, a lot of times coming from a a Jewish family who loves to eat. Uh, the issues that I face sometimes in my life is around food, you know, gaining weight, losing weight, etc. So if you tell my family at the holidays that you're dieting, the first thing they're going to do is pile your plate full of food because it makes them uncomfortable. So what I've, you know, I just use that as an example. So what I, I'll do to reset is I may literally leave the room make up an excuse. And I try to, through some self-talk, figure out, you know, what's going on with me. Because usually I'll experience some anger in those moments and feel like I'm not being supported the way I want to be supported. But what I'll realize is it's really about other people's issues and it's tapping something much deeper inside of me. Yes. So I compartmentalize and go, you know what? When I have the space to think it through, uh, talk to my therapist this, go on a walk, talk to a friend, I'm going to be able to process it. But right now I'm going to put it in a place and like for safekeeping. But I'm going to look at it and go, you know, eventually this is just going to make me stronger. So I always say to myself, if I'm having like a number eight reaction to what I think is a number two um, uh, event, I'll go, okay, it's tapping something deeper. I need to take responsibility eventually and figure out what's going on. Okay, so you heard it here first, folks, on the Recovered yeah. Life Show. An actual psychologist working through these things with his oh, yes. fan, with his we're all the poster childs for mental health. We have no issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I hear. But you know what's so good oh, that I'm glad that you're saying this, though, Doctor G. I'm glad you're saying this because I think that in the back of people's mind, they think, especially people who have been sober for a lengthy period of time start to say, well, I should have fixed all these. I shouldn't be having an emotional reaction to anything. Nothing should trigger me any, anymore. That's really, I think, unrealistic. Completely unrealistic. I mean, life is pretty messy. And you could be a psychologist, uh, have done a lot of therapy. You're going to have issues the rest of your life. <sighs> what, what changes is your ability to deal with them and be less reactive, being able to process more. And, uh, you know, that's eventually going to give you more free will to make the choices that you can make that are positive choices in your life. A lot of times when we're in addiction, we're making choices that are so reactive that we're not thinking through them. So I tell clients all the time, I do it for myself. If I'm feeling very emotional about something, I need to take the time and put some thought in between the emotion and try to understand what might be going on for myself. You know, I love, I love this because I, I, you know, you talked about compartmentalizing things and kind of saying, okay, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to put this on the shelf for right now. And then I'm going to come back and explore this. Right. I love that because I think compartmentalizing gets such a bad rap, but we know, you but know, we know that in recovery, we're consciously, consciously doing it. Right. Compartmentalizing. 
we're not going into denial. We're, we're literally saying, I'm going to put this there, but I'm going to put it on hold because I don't have the place to deal with it right now, but I am going to deal with it. I love that. I love that because I, I really think that the danger zone for people in recovery is unchecked emotions. These, like you were talking about this number eight or nine reaction to a number one or two event, this constant going up and down with your nervous system, right? Puts you in a position where I think you're more likely to, to relapse or just act out, right? Overeat, you know, have a lot of sugar, whatever that might be acting out instead of just saying, Hey, I'm uncomfortable. I'm going to deal with this and look at this, but maybe right now isn't the time that I unpack all of this. And you know what? I, I agree completely, Damon. You know what I, I sometimes do is, you know, with, that, with a lot of family members, I try to find something that I really love about them. You know, it could be their sense of humor, for example. And I try to focus on that. I could have a lot of other issues, but I go, okay, I'm just going to focus on the positive right now. And I'm also going to limit my time. I know sometimes there are family events. I'll look at them and go, I'm good for about three hours. And after that, it's going to be too much. My defenses are going to start getting knocked down. So I better take a break. Like, like one of the things I like to do yes. is I'll bring my own car <laughs> to an event because I may want to leave if it becomes too much. And I love uh, that. So that's where I try to control it in a positive way as much as I can. That's what yeah, I love this because we talk. Well, we talk about this pre a lot of times in the recovered life community. We talk about setting up your holidays for success. If you know that two to three hours is really the magic time, right? Like that really is the time. Then you need to design that where you're coming in. They're getting the best of you, right? You're exactly. able to really participate and do it. Maybe it's not something where you can spend three days locked in a house in Cincinnati, Ohio with somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe, maybe that's just yeah, not I all the time. doable Stay in a hotel, find the money, you know, exactly. Which is exactly. very positive. Give yourself your own space, especially if you're not used to being around your family um, or, you know, close friends. And, you know, if you live, let's say we're in California, if you live here, my family's actually back in Canada. I go there. It's not just my family. That is, you know, they are who they are. The whole environment is different. And something, another trigger is be ready because a lot of times you go back home and it's almost like you, you're the age you were when you left and people treat you that way. And it, it's, you know, no matter how much you've grown, you know, all like here, for example, David, you know, I, my, my Jewish name is Herschel. So I always have an uncle who calls me Herschel and I want to, you know, which is like a kid's name and I, in my head, I'm going, Hey, I'm Dr. Gloss. I'm Dr. G. I'm a clinical psychologist. I have clients and patients, but to him, I'm always going to be that like 15 year old kid. And instead of trying to prove myself, I've learned to just accept it and relax into it. If I, I was around him for a long time, I may want to, you know, correct it or make a difference. But in that moment, I make it about him. That's who he needs me to be. I'm okay about it. Oh, that's such, that's such great advice. You know, I, I, I wanted to kind of recap this whole sure. thing. And this has been such a great episode, Dr. G, because so many people struggle with this, right? They, they really want to play full out and they want to go to everything and do everything. But deep down inside their sphere that it's not going to go well. And maybe it's, maybe it's, it's, reality maybe it hasn't gone well maybe right? it won't okay go well time. yeah maybe it won't go well and being okay with that right to be okay that not everything is perfect and that maybe it's not going to go okay what's your final thoughts to people who are sitting there and struggling and kind of on the fence and saying you know what i'm really afraid of this holiday season what would be your advice to them you know that are, that are, that are listening to this now I, I think you have to be honest with your level of anxiety if you're truly so terrified and so afraid maybe you're nearly you're newly sober and a lot of people in your family drink you may want to decide to just skip this holiday season with your family and you know 
participate with some of your friends or that you've met through meetings, etc. I know that's a difficult choice, but you may not be ready to partake, but you might be ready next year. If you feel like you're going to go, be able to control your environment as much as you can, where, like we said, bring your own car, recognize how good you might be for a certain amount of time. Um, you know, get the support you need. If you need to go with someone, go with someone. It's written, or if you have a close, like for me, I have a close cousin and, um, you know, she knows what I've gone through with some of my issues. So I have someone I can lean on for support. The other thing is to try to just relax and enjoy it. They're not going to, truly not going to get who you are yet. It's going to take some time. But you're there to celebrate the holidays. Everyone's, uh, you know, there to do that. So find the joy, find the humor, find the fun. And then if it gets too much, I would say just leave. I love that. Such great advice, Dr. G. Thank you so much for coming on today. We always get such great wisdom from you. We're going to put some links to how you get to Dr. G and some tips that he's got. We're going to put on Recovered Life. So all you have to do is check out the show notes. Dr. G, thanks so much for coming on the show and happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to you too, Damon. It's been a pleasure. Keep the conversation going. Join Recovered Life, a community of like-minded people who are looking to live their best recovered lives. Membership is free and you can apply at recoveredlife.us.